No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. And today we've got what some might call the grand champion of the BBC. <laughs> Dread is in the wow. building. Oh, man. It's a pleasure to be here, brother. You carry an aura about you just because we're all aware of the work that you put in right. in the game. And let me just throw a pause sort of on this whole conversation. Gotcha. You know, just so that everybody can know that uh -huh. this is just strictly guys chatting about work. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. I've heard so much about you. And one of the main things I hear from girls is like they always say, he is the nicest, most sweetest, most normal dude. Everybody thinks he's going to be a gangster or right. like super like aggressive or some shit. Uh -huh. He's just not like that. Yeah, no. Nah, you know what, man? From from early on, I figured that was like the best street to go down mm. uh, with working with what I got. Right. You know what I mean? Because, you know, on the surface, you could look at it and go, damn, look at this guy's just killing shit you know what i mean <laughs> yeah so i i didn't want to be stuck having that uh reputation so to speak so and i genuinely am a nice guy so um it kind of just goes hand in hand with helping to get uh keep getting uh you know the work because that that is interesting because i've had that conversation about what personality type for a male performer is the best long-term strategy uh-huh and I think, you know, because the adult world is a very different type of world. Right. The girls, realistically, especially now, the only thing that's the thing, the girls are kind of in the financial position that they're, they're, they're in charge. Right. They have the fame to right. a level that very few guys ever get to. Mm -hmm. So if you're a guy and you want to fit in in this world, it really, really is insanely important that you are well liked, right. that the girls feel comfortable around you. It's, it's pretty much your, if you want to be a male performer, you're playing the game of making everybody like you totally totally and and you know what man you brought up the whole the whole content thing with only fans that has really helped me to kind of spread that kind of persona you know what i mean mm. because when i was just shooting on set you know it's kind of hard to kind of you know i don't know if i want to say break the ice but um you know you could get just pretty like typecast as being that guy who shows up on set and does that thing Whereas shooting my own shit, you know, I could shoot with these girls and kind of we could interact a little bit more. Mm. And then they could tell the next one, hey, if you're thinking about working with Dre, you know, I worked with him. Good guy. See, it's interesting because now in the transition from everything being the studio content to so much OnlyFans stuff, you tell me, is is the new OnlyFans era, does it feel a lot closer to just hooking up? Yes and no. I think yes and no, man. Um you know, look, I was, I'm, I'm still a Jules Jordan guy, right? And there are just certain girls that uh, I won't shoot with for him. That you know, obviously doing content, I will shoot for. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it's open doors up like that. But, um, but I, I mean, I think it was inevitable. It was gonna start going in this direction where you know performers are having more independence and freedom and whatnot. And so. I'm not really surprised at what's going on right now. Right, definitely. You know? For you on an enjoyment level, though, are you getting a lot more, like, from a purely sexual standpoint, when you're hooking up in some girl's apartment for the content, does that feel a little bit more enjoyable than when you get 10 ring lights aimed at you or whatever? Yeah, but see, you know what, man? The way I do my stuff, man, I, I, I run it almost like uh, an actual set. You, you know? take all the stuff you've learned from that and kind Absolutely. of apply it? Absolutely. Mm. I put it all together, you know, with all the people that I've shot for, which really, surprisingly, hasn't been a lot. But just from the people I've shot for, I kind of incorporate that into, to like, what I'm doing. Um, so do I still get up for it? Absolutely. Right. No doubt. You know, and I've had people say to me, man, it's got to be. Yeah, you got it's got to be like almost boring at this point and just repetitive. And I'm like, nah, because you know what, man? I find something new in some kind of weird, freaky way to get into each girl each time I shoot with them. You know that, I mean? That's a very consistent thing you hear, yeah. is that no matter what she looks like, right. maybe you can look at the shiny butt <laughs> cheek when it's perfectly stretched <laughs> right, out. Right, right, right. Yeah. Totally. Absolutely, man. And then you have days like I just had recently. Uh, I don't know how familiar you are with uh, Abigail Mack. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you shot with her. Just shot with her. 
And it's just one of those times that just reminds you. Oh, yeah. What a great job. Uh, absolutely. Bro. I would you do know, this for free. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Yeah, like I, I got I four scenes next week. Okay. And yeah, like, you know, you could allow your brain to slide into the way of thinking of it of like, oh, God, like I'm going to be doing all this. Right. I got all this other shit to do. God yeah. damn. But then you really like take a step back and you're like, I'm making good money. Right doing something that a lot of the richest guys in the world basically devote their entire fucking existence to trying to do true to even be in the position to take it for granted for right. a moment is probably a good sign absolutely no absolutely man and and here's the thing i shot with her three of the times prior to this but of course those were all on it was on Jules Jordan's watch. It was on this studio I shot for in Miami's watch. This was the first time me and her got together, and we said, you know what, let's do this. Right. So we we turned it up, man, you know, and um, we both got it in, and, you know, um, it's a damn good time. <sighs> yeah. I hope to experience that one day. Yeah, yeah me too. Me too, <laughs> brother. <laughs> but that's crazy, though. It's your fourth time shooting with her. Yeah. Do you do, – is it almost like – okay, if we if we did over the course of the next couple of years, if we did – four interviews right. by the fourth one we would have a, a presumably much stronger rapport we would be right. we would know a lot more about each other conversationally sure. we would know how to align do you get that through sleeping with the same woman on camera over and over you know what man it could go that way you know mm. but when it's somebody like her because you know what she's bringing to the table you know what i mean so it's like you know like i got up for it you know when i the, when i just recently shot with her i got so up for that like i just don't get up for like just a the, the, the regular, you know, I mean, I was like ready. And so you would think, man, it's the fourth time. What are you guys going to do that's different? You know, is, isn't it going to seem kind of played? Nah, man, not when it's like that, you mm -hmm. know. It's almost like it was like the first time all over again, you know. Wow. She's she's dope like that. Tell me a little bit about your uh, early life, where you're coming from and everything. Early life, how it all started, man. Because you didn't get into the game until late Later into on. your life. Yeah, Later which is on. quite interesting. You know what, man? I'm glad you, you asked me that. It, it, look, I was a, a fan of porn from a young age, man. Like okay. seven years old, you know, discovered my father's stash under the bed kind of thing, you know. Um, my sister went to the left. My brother went to the right. I went underneath the bed, pulled out the, the, the shoe box. And Pops was into some some devious shit, <laughs> straight up. And at that age, I didn't know how to process it, but I knew right. I liked it, mm -hmm. you know. So it was in me from an early age, and it was one of those things where I said, and I think most guys say that when they see porn. At some point or another, they go, I could do that. You know what I mean? Right. If the circumstances were right, you know, and that was my thing. I was like, you know, back then I was like, if only I had my shot, I could maybe put a mask on and, you know, stay anonymous and work it out. And you're talking when you're very young, oh, you yeah. were thinking this. My mind was there. <laughs> I was there, bro. But I'm you also had no clue that you were well endowed. I'm assuming no. even as a young kid, you were well endowed. At that time, I thought everybody was packing what I had. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Straight up. Right. It was just an average thing. But it wasn't until later on, man, because, you know, my early days, New York, you know, that's where I was born and raised. Um, I was just on some, you know, watching pro wrestling, reading comics, you know, mm. um, getting pussy really wasn't the, the priority, even though I, I, you know, it was there. I liked it. I You're liked, in New York city. Yeah. I Where? was in, um, I was in the Bronx, born in the Bronx, Wow, okay. moved out to long Island for a little bit. Then I went down to Florida when I was about maybe 17 and uh, I was in Florida, uh, up until four years ago when I moved out here. Okay. But the porn thing, it was something that was always there. It was always, if I only I had my shot, man, I could do this. And it just didn't seem like I was ever going to get that shot. So I would say uh, around 2009, um, working, you know, regular job, just barely keeping my head above water. But so are you having sexual experiences where the girls are, because I've known guys who had penises are probably like half the size of yours, right. who basically were almost getting turned down by women at times in their life because it was so intimidating for them. So I'm assuming it didn't take long for you to figure out, like, this is out of the ordinary. Well, the girls... See, now, first of all, when I was that age, man, I, again, the pussy not being the priority, so I would get mine here and there, but and whenever I did... It was never really a, 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 a big, huge issue, no pun intended, but it, you know what I mean? It was just, damn, this guy got a big dick. He's packing. Right. And we just keep it moving. It wasn't until I started in porn, and I, I used to be involved in the lifestyle a lot, 
I don't know how familiar you are with that. I, I know that, and that, I thought that was hilarious when I was watching you on TT Boys podcast, right. and you were talking about how you were just going out and just like uh, getting flown out or oh, flying boy. yourself out just to sleep with some some random couples and shit like that. And like, he's assuming you're getting paid. You're like, right. I, I had not thought of that yet. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> but mine wasn't even going down that street at the time, man. It was all about busting nuts, having fun. You know, the, th that whole experience, man. And I went through years of, of doing that. So, it, you know, the, the whole lifestyle and porn thing, it all came together at one time. And that's when the whole thing about, damn, you got a big dick. Because when I first got into porn, it all revolved around this uh, contest they were having. They were trying to find this new character who had to be well endowed, you know, really good personality. And I'm sitting at my desk job and I was like, yo, you know what? This is the shot right here. I've been thinking about all my life. You know what I mean? Mm. And so the guy says, man, if you think you're that guy, Send us in a you know a piece of your, your junk you know and and we'll get back to you if we we you th think you're the guy kind of thing. So I remember I went in the bathroom, got my shit ready, took a few pictures, called me the next day, he said, "Yo, you're the dude." I, said, you know, we, we've been, I tell this story of people cracker. We've been looking at dicks all day, man. You are the guy. We, we got to get you out here. So uh, that's where it started, bro. But even at that time. I thought I was ready, you know, and I wasn't. Mm. You know what I mean? Because, again, what you see on the screen, you see the the end result, and it's like, damn, man, oh, shit, look at those tits, look at that ass. I'd get all in that. But then when you go through it and you realize the the work that's involved and all the things, the, the lights and other people, and, you know, that shit fucked me up the first time, you know? Really? Yeah, I was like, this ain't for me. Right. So I I was out. And while and I was done, and it, it's funny because I was like 2009, so I was gone 2010, 11, 12, 13, 14. 2015 is when I get, went back in, right? Reluctantly, you know, it was a girl I was talking to in Miami, and she was like, "You got to do this again." Did and, you ever like run run trains with your homies when you were younger or anything like that? Nah, but in the lifestyle, because those years when I right. wasn't in porn. That's when I was getting loose, you know. Okay. So I was doing like the trains. Never done it on set, and some people think I'm against it on a pro level because I've never done it. But I'm just like I don't, I don't really, I'm not feeling it, you know. Well, I mean, also, it's kind of like you know, if you're a rapper and you're on a song with eight other dudes, right? How special do you really seem? Right. As a, a right. Lot, like the greatest rappers really curate where they are seen, right? Totally, mm. totally. So I, I always felt like, and the way I was always promoted in porn, I was just this one man kind of, you know, thing to see. You know what I mean? So right. No, yeah, definitely. Why sell yourself uh, that way if you don't have to? Hey guys, just a word from our sponsor, Prize Picks. The NFL season is back. We've teamed up with Prize Picks to give the fans a kickstart on the season. Any first-time user who uses our promo code No Jumper, one word will get an instant deposit match of up to $100. If you deposit $100, Prize Pick will give you $100. If you deposit $50, Prize Picks will give you $50. Can you name an easier way to double your money? Prize Picks is currently operational in over 30 states and Canada and is by far the best legal way to get on the action for places like California, Florida, Texas, and over 70% of the U.S., who doesn't like free money? If you're curious as to how it works, you pick two to five players on an over-under for one of their projections, and you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. If you want to take an over on passing yards or under on rushing yards for your favorite players, you can do that with prize picks and win big. Prize Picks is safe and offers quick withdrawals. Download Prize Picks today and get active with us. Use promo code NOJUMPER, one word, for your 100% deposit match up to $100 after you sign up. Making money has never been so easy. Now let's get back to the interview. Man, when you say the lifestyle, you're talking about what? Like going to sex clubs oh, and yeah. like this sort of parties and oh, get togethers yeah. is there a good amount of that in new york and no you know where i really got into it man i jumped into it in uh south florida miami okay that's where it started and as far as lifestyle shit goes uh at that time and i think it's still like that now if you were in south florida or texas those are like the two big spots for lifestyle really Acti huge massive and um brother when i tell you it, <sighs> girlfriends and wives and you know how do you want to when you get here tied up blindfolded you want to bent over 
uh, butt plug in her ass, you know. <laughs> so you're showing up at these clubs and stuff, and you're having sex in front of people, and yes. you start to develop a reputation, and all of a sudden, right. guys who like to be cucked, they're looking at you as kind of their ideal person to be cucking their girl. Yes, and I've done I've done that. I've had my share of of doing that. Uh, it's not really my thing, but I would do it, you know. So it's um, a little bit of a turnoff when there's a guy eating a bowl of cereal in the corner. Oh, yeah, with an apron on. It says bitch boy. You know what I mean? I, I'm like, yo. I'm like, that ain't, that ain't for me, man. So if he's, if he's on some cool shit, it's not that bad, but there, right. a lot of times it's some weird shit. It's some weird shit. Oh, <laughs> right. Okay. Bingo. Got I it. mean, brother, if, 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 if it was like that kind of a dynamic from a couple and it was a guy who yeah, I just want to see, witness, you know, my lady having this pleasure, I'm cool with that. Right. But when it comes to playing into that whole you know, you sit down in the corner and you, I'm, you're only going to watch when I tell you to watch. And uh, don't you like the way his dick is fucked? All that I don't really get. It's not my thing, you know. But Yeah, don't be a presence in the room. Right. You know? Like, totally. If you want to be a fly on the wall, that's right. one thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I could relate to that because I've always yeah. felt that I – exhibitionist-wise, right. I never, like, identified that way. But when I think about myself throughout my life – a million different times I would be like fucking a girl and my homie would walk in and I, it would actually kind of exhilarate me a little bit right, knowing right, right. that somebody was seeing it. Me and my girl from the very beginning right. were getting drunk and hooking up and we're fucking FaceTiming random girls that oh, we shit. know together and just like letting them see and stuff. I think right. that that's always – I think that's a big part of why I've never really – had the nervousness thing on right. camera it just comes very natural wow. to me you know that's rare bro yeah that's a rare that's a rare thing right no, there I had, a, I had a hard time getting hard one time but i blame it on the fact that i smoked a blunt with the girl in between the interview and the gotcha. sex so i was like very high and it was when we first started doing this right yeah. see th there's, a, there's a fine line with that because i like to you know get my little smoke on before i do things right but if i cross that line now i start zoning out and now right. i'm you know just not where i should be right uh, as far as handling the matter at hand goes you know i feel it but okay so. what i have done in terms of uh you know creating plug talk and shooting stuff from my girls only fans and everything is I, I don't mean to even compare that to the stuff that you guys have to do on set so talk to me about the challenges of that because it seems like it's very much like you do what you got to get a boner you got to smash for 10 15 minutes then they got to break down the lights move it over to another area yeah. and then you got to get hard all over again right. is is that the hardest part yes and that's the part that fucked me up initially back in 2009 that I, I couldn't get over that hill and i remember everybody would say to me you know what you'll get used to it it's like riding a bicycle once you learn how to ride it you never forget it and i could never get to that point it was always a struggle it wasn't fun mm. you know um but the more i got involved with the lifestyle because a lot of times you know these husbands or boyfriends they would want to videotape or take pictures so i got comfortable uh doing my thing you know in close quarters like that you know mm. so that when i got back in in 2015 i was ready for whatever uh, but that being said, I think hands down, that is the hardest part. Like um, this is a studio, uh, Vixen, who I shot for a few times, right. you know, blacked and blacked raw and all mm -hmm. that. And um, the finished the finish product is always great. Mm. But I remember what it was like to go through that process, man. Right. Stop and go. Wardrobe, change, come back, dialogue, you know, get the dick back up. It was like, fuck, man. You right. Know? So The whole experience is not exactly tailored to making your job no, easy. It's no. actually kind of tailored to, right. like, prove that you can do this yeah. under the harshest conditions. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it, it's, it's hard, but it, it can, obviously, it can be done. But, you know, when I shoot for uh, my man Jules, uh, it's pretty much come in, gonzo, boom, knock it out, different positions, let's keep it moving. And, right. You know. Yeah, because to me, there's kind of like two different polar ends of the porn world that you can kind of gravitate towards, which is you can go for realism or you could go for like real aesthetic perfection sure and it's very it's two very different things i hear about directors and some directors will just let people go at it and some directors right. want to curate the exact shots and they'll have a fucking mood board with, right we want to recreate this exact shot from 18 minutes into this video because this video is number one on pornhub and sure that's kind of a totally different way to take it from your perspective which one do you gravitate more towards the perfect visual element or the actual 
you know, animalistic lust part. You know what, man? Bro, I try to combine them, you know? I mean, one of the things that people say about my OnlyFans is that, like, it just comes across more natural, mm. you know? Because I want to try to bring that out, that level of that that high intensity, that passionate, you know what I mean? And um, And also, at the same time, get that quality shot that quality angle you know that 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 where it looks really good and so i try to combine both so um that's pretty much what i gravitate to mm -hmm. or at least i try to do right you know I, I when i was watching you and tt boy and stuff on that interview which I believe the full interview is like six hours long. I didn't watch the whole yeah. thing. I made like halfway through. Right. But yeah, <laughs> so, right, so right. It's, it's amazing that that information is out there. Yeah. Well, good. well, you know what it was, man, that day, uh, because I was sitting in front of, uh, you know, Lexington Steel, who right. was like, he was the guy I credit uh, for, you know, me getting into the game. So to be sitting there, you know, with him kicking it like that, I was more, even though I was the guest that day, I was more caught up in just those two guys, right? You know, talking about the shit that they've gone through back in the day, and that shit was mind blowing to me, man. I was like, wow, you know, because that's, you know, doing it back then. So much more respect for those guys, you know, back in those days. Just man. because they had to do it without drugs and everything. Oh yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah. Damn, that's the shit right there, bro. <laughs> you, try, you know what I mean? You go into a scenario and you have no. Nothing to lean on, whether it's Viagra, Cialis, and some right. guys shoot, some guys whatever, uh, prosthetic, whatever. None of that shit was, a, you, you know, a, 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 an option back then. Right. You just had to do it. Because TT Boy has a Vlad TV interview clip where he talks about having fucked over 10,000 women and is basically describing his years in the game as him shooting like four or five scenes a day. Damn. Over and over and over, like right. may, maybe shooting four or five times in a week and never fucking up once. Wow. I'm like, you yeah. are an assassin. Yeah, that is, if those stats are even close to true, then yeah. you're a scary dude. Brother, let me tell you, when those two guys were just talking and they were just reminiscing, I was in awe sitting there like, wow, you know, telling me shit about when they were in Brazil and shit and all that pussy going on. I'm like, damn. Right. So... Um, I just kind of sat back. That's why it went so long because it just turned into this thing where they were just like going back and forth and I would like chime in. But um, yeah, that's why that one was like a marathon and shit. Yeah, and it, it felt important because let's be real, like the niche that you occupy and because of social media, this has kind of changed in a way because right. now a guy like you or, or whoever, they can have a big OnlyFans, big Instagram, whatever, and right. like have a real brand for yourself, have your own website, all this stuff. Uh -huh. But you know, porn is like about the biggest thing in the world that nobody fucking talks about, right? Because people are embarrassed or whatever. It's right. like the biggest thing in the world. It's but you know, it's probably bigger than football. But everybody who watches football right. talks about football, so it consumes. It's thought of a very different way. Yeah. But you guys are sitting there. You all understand and respect the art in a way that almost nobody gets and that you guys are like this insanely integral part of making porn which everyone watches right but it's like a, a sort of underappreciated or understated art form which really almost any guy if you were to think about it it would be like wow that is insanely impressive you know we have we have such a deep respect for great athletes in our right. culture and this is just like one athlete that doesn't really get his due for the most part that's true man but you know what it's it just goes back to that whole thing about sex we know sex sells but you know um there's this picture painted on it where it's it's dirty it's fucked up if you do that you're no good it's good to see recently what it's starting to shift mm -hmm. in more of an artistic you know uh direction which thank god for that because you know only years ago, it was looked at like, oh man, if you if you're into porn, you're fucked up. You know right. what I mean? It's you're not sleazy. You must be right. a drug addict. You must have diseases. Totally, hundred percent. So it's so good to see, you know, what's going on right now, man. That it's just kind of shifting. Now, all that being said, I don't know if it'll ever be fully accepted, right? The way I think a lot of people would like to see it, but to at least see the attempt being made right now, it's a, it's a fucking good thing. Yeah, know? and I, I think we have to credit a lot of the girls who are making their presence known on podcasts and stuff as like a yeah. big part of it. I remember when I first interviewed Riley Reed, I think she's the first porn star I ever interviewed, and to me it was so obvious. It's like a young lady right. who's become a millionaire off of you know her own content and doing her own thing. This is incredible. I was really excited to talk to her. Right. 
And the response I got was like shocking at that time wow. of how, you know, a lot of people loved it. And it's got one of our most popular videos now, but also like a lot of people were just like really kind of offended by the notion of me having her on, Damn. which I wasn't really ready for. Right. I don't think that that really happens in the same way now where it's like pretty normal. I would say like a very large percentage of podcasts have wanted to have conversations with adult performers. Mm. Well, brother, kudos to you, man, for doing what you do and, 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 and shining that light and giving, you know, performers a chance to show that it's not just about what you might think. You know right. what I'm saying? Uh, so kudos to you, man. Mm, people, that. people need to be more open to, you know, given a platform to performers to express themselves so that, you know, the world can see it, it ain't just, oh, shit, this girl, look what she does for a living. You know, forget about her. She's a bad person. You right. know what I mean? So, um, yeah, man, definitely. Yeah. So talk to me about the drugs. Is, it, is this something that you've messed with a good amount or what are your what are your thoughts? Oh, on to it? get me going? Yeah. Man, I go. There's an island. <laughs> And uh, off the coast of Costa Rica, I go to one. Now, nah, let me stop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what? You can't He's fucking. Like, what the fuck is he going with? Order it? Right. Yeah. I'm like, you find a sacred right, herb right, right. out there exactly, or something. Yeah. Exactly. No, man. Um, yes. I mean, I've I've kind of, in my years, man, I've always been a, um, you know, whether it's Cialis, Viagra, I, I'm not ashamed to admit it. You know what I mean? Um, but the other things that are out there now are scary. Uh, that the I've, shooting up is what you're referring to. Yeah, I've heard a lot of uh, negative shit. Right about that. that. Rico Strong told me about how that goes. Yeah, and that it's like a little prick, and then right. you have to massage it into your dick. Right, and then he said it's just a fucking mountain of rock hard cock for like a few hours. That's the scary thing, you know. I remember when I was a kid. And uh, in my, my drug days of like, you know, experimenting, acid was one thing that me and my friends would do. And I always hated it because you couldn't turn it off. You couldn't stop <laughs> right. it. You know what I mean? So that shot is like the same thing. You mm -hmm. know, it's like once you take it, your shit's on full throttle for <laughs> however many hours, you know. Right. And um, that's the scary thing. Motherfuckers ending up in the emergency room and shit. That you know? happens. Yeah, it does. Wow. Yeah, man. And it, to get it down, you know what I mean? And so um, it just scared me. Um, so I don't, um, I wouldn't advise it. I mean, on the surface, you look at it and you go, wow, that's the answer, man. Mm. You know, that, that'll, that'll get me by. And yes, it will, but you could also be opening the door for some shit that you'll regret, you know? So um, I know people do it, you know, um, but... Yeah, it's scary though, man. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna be honest. With you, I still have never tried anything. Mm -hmm. I just like you I just figured, go straight up. I'm, I'm like, I have a good routine going. Right. I feel like I, I'm in control. Right. Why would I want to necessarily risk it? Right. And I also just have never even had it around, so I've never had to feel tempted or anything like that. Gotcha. And sometimes, you know, when we book other guys to shoot or whatever, you end up in some weird fucking scenarios right. where they're off of two viagras and they're sweating and they're oh, red shit. in the face and they're right. beating their dick and it's just a very like weird anxious environment that i'm like i don't want to get into that mind right. state if i don't have to <laughs> right 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 yeah Nah, respect on that man i, I don't blame you bro i mean because like i said it on the surface it looks like man that's the that's it that's the answer that's all i gotta do right if a uh, scene is required to go fuck in the snow you know 30 degree <laughs> weather you take that shit you're ready you know it's right. like let's go and that's enticing but again you know i've heard a lot of the negative shit man so it's like you know play at your own risk kind of thing you know what i mean but um i wouldn't advise it you know but uh people do it right yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Damn. So I'm you know, old school with that Cialis, Viagra, Vigora. Uh, I think people, you got to find whatever works for you. If, mm. if you have somebody like you who just could do it and you could get it going through your own head, that's beautiful. Uh, keep it that way if you can. Because like you said, whether it's pills, it could affect your heart, you know, just all kinds of things. So would you say it's almost like a problem in the game as it is these days where like a lot of dudes are really reliant oh, on sure. it? Sure. Really? Okay. Absolutely. Because that's like, yo, now I can do this. Yeah. You know, now, now I'm in, man. Where do I sign up? You know, let's go. You wow. know what I'm saying? Right. Absolutely. I mean, I, I can't say this actual factual, but there's been like now there's more guys available in the game than ever before you right, know and yeah. i don't think that's a coincidence you know what i mean mm. i mean i remember years ago and i'm going back 
to the days of when one of the knocks on porn would be, you always see the same guys all the time. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? It's the same dudes, you know? And there was a reason for that, because those were the dudes who were, you know, uh, reliable, dependable, they can get the job done. Because that shit was hard to do, man, to, like, just walk into a room you've never been in before. Yes, the the motivation is the, the, the chick, and you... You know, you try to, you know, uh, uh, get through it that way. But there's just so many factors going on. But now, because of all this shit that's going on, it's, you know, you just got guys like, where do I sign up? Let me get into this. Let's get it going. Let's do it. Mm. I'm not saying it's bad for it. You know, it's some diversity and whatnot. But that's what's up, you know. All right, definitely. Yeah, I mean, the people who are, like, you, you figure that out booking male talent real quick is mm -hmm. that, if you find somebody who's trustworthy that you can just consistently work with, right. that that is by far the most important thing. And and you feel bad for a guy too because like sometimes somebody will blow it the first time and you're you're just thinking in your head like this guy might be great right. the other ninety nine percent of the time, but I'm probably not going to find out because I doubt I'm booking him again. Yeah, yeah. I mean it's it's tough, man. Look, I've had my struggles, right. you know, and it's just it could get in your head, and once it gets in your head, that's pretty much a wrap. And, it, and that's why you don't want to demonize it or talk down upon it because right. you kind of know that this is an inevitable <laughs> part of the game. Yeah. And you, and I feel like if I were to like make fun of somebody on this podcast or whatever for that, right. that's why I've always avoided even. Right. And you figure that out in porn too, especially me being a real por uh, podcaster. Is like I, I told a story at one point about a girl shitting on me, mm -hmm. and then I went back to my girl, and my girl was like, "Hey, like she didn't say anything, but." That's probably like something you shouldn't talk about. Like right. the, a few days after it happened. Oh, I'm like, shit. Yeah, okay. Right. <laughs> that makes sense. Okay. Good point. Oh, yeah. Now, brother, <laughs> I, as you were saying that, I had a flashback because I, I, I've been down that street. I had, <laughs> I'm sure. I had that happen, uh, you know. Right. Um, so, and that's no fun. You're a resilient guy, though. You, you made hey, it through. You, 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 I, I made it through, man. I felt bad for the girl because mm. it was in her head, you know. Right. She just couldn't get um, clean. <laughs> that day and they were trying everything right. the emodiums and the, the, the multiple uh you know cleansing whatever and she'd come out and go i'm ready and it's like he ain't ready you know <laughs> <laughs> you get you get it in a little bit i mean yeah. what what is it like getting to know <laughs> this many women on such an intimate level though is, is there something about it that from a psychological standpoint, do you notice the effect on you? Or, or at this point, does it really kind of just feel like work and you're able to sort of compartmentalize it? No, you know what, man? Nah, I told you, I always get up for it. I always find a way to keep it interesting and keep it fresh. Because, it, it, you know what, when the day comes when it all becomes routine and just like par for the course and shit, right. that's the day I'm done. Mm. You know, if I can't find any enjoyment in that... I mean, I get ready just watching a girl taking a pretty girls or you know, the tease, you know, whole angle. And, you know, so I still find ways to 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 get me excited. You know what I mean? So. um, So, yeah. Right. Do you feel like you're more motivated by the money or by the experience at this point in your life? Oof, that only fans money is good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Because <laughs> shit, you were flying out to, to fuck <laughs> random girls. Right. For free for at free. one point in your life. So and, and and same here. I mean, I was going to the bar and right. buying shots and shit, like right. fucking trying to get laid for a good part of my life. You yeah. know that that is this is clearly something you would not only do for free, you would pay for it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so to get paid for it right. is kind of a, a strange experience. Yeah. I, no doubt, man. I always thought that dynamic of getting paid for sex is just always mind blowing. Because I'm like, wow, man, that that that's cool. You know what I mean? But that being said, the money I was making when I was just performing was good money right and nothing i am talking i ain't talking negative about that in any way right but that only fans money is just like something different man yeah. it's just weird you know dude you'd be making xyz amount of money in your sleep you know you can't beat that you know what i mean so that motivates me <laughs> you know what i mean definitely but okay explain how you becoming a contract guy for jules jordan works you come in the game and is this kind of like an essential part of his business model is that when a, when a new male talent or a new talent in general comes in, it's like very advantageous for him to get a, a window of exclusivity by sort of locking them in? It's definitely advantageous for him. And right. he's a smart dude, man, you know. And, uh, you know, when I came back on the scene in 2015, there were like three studios I was shooting for at the same time, him being one of them. Right. And 
I was on my game and I was hungry at that point. You know, I was like, yo, you know, I'm 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 on a mission right now. You know, <laughs> whatever you put in front of me, I'm knocking it down with a vengeance. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so I was hungry. And so I'd shoot for him, then I'd shoot for these guys over at Evil, then I was shooting for the guys in Miami. And it just got to a point in where Jules said, look, I want you on my team, permanent, you know? And it wasn't a, a hard sell because I knew about his reputation with Lexington Steel and Mandingo. These were two big dick guys that he really showcased, and I just liked how he did that. So I was like, yo, I'm count me in, man. You want me exclusive? I'm all in. So I, it really wasn't that difficult to tell the other ones, like, yeah, that's it, you know. Right. Uh, I gotta go, you know. So, um, so for him, um, yes, it was advantageous, and the, it's been successful. I mean, I think we're at dread like fifteen or sixteen right now, mm. a little over four years. I, uh, maybe the exclusive thing, maybe around like three years. But anyway, we've been on a good roll, and I'll continue to do my thing with him because he, I just like the way he does his shit. You know what I mean? That being said. I'm having a blast shooting my own shit, bro. Right. Oh, my God. In terms of, like, being locked in with him for, you know, uh, professional studio shit, is it just kind of like an ease of, of use thing where it's like you don't have to travel, you don't have to be, like, juggling your schedule or everything, or he kind of pays you, like, a premium on pays top premium. of what you would expect to get normally? Right. My, the, the flat rate, which was part of the, the whole pitch, was, look, I, in order for me to have you exclusive, I'm going to pay you this. And I was like, yo, <laughs> consider it done, man. I'm right. I'm all in on that. So it, it it wasn't hard, you know what I mean? It was it was it was an easy, easy sell. And it's just the familiarity with how he gets down. I like, you know, how he does shit, you know. Um, and so that's why I'll continue. Now I've never been, I think most porn guys you talk to, they're more I'm shooting for this one on Tuesday, that one on Thursday, that one on Sunday, whatever. You know, right. they're, they're multiple. I've never been that guy. I've always been just the stationary featured guy, you know. So um, for me right now, as far as on a pro level goes, what I do with him, yeah, I'm totally cool moving forward with that, you know. We've arrived here in very different ways, but me and you are both in like kind of our – our own situations where uh -huh. it's like, you know, we've got uh, either enough uh, natural talent, I guess we could say in the case of you or enough sort of like built in value in the case of me where we're able to sort of like have a lot of control over how we shoot. So we don't really have to, you know, be cobbling together a, a, a paycheck through, you know, doing dealing right. with all these different people, whatever. But it, it is funny when I talk to younger guys who are in the game and mm -hmm. I realize that. This guy's day yesterday was that he like drove around LA and fucked four different girls <laughs> and filmed it for his OnlyFans. And right. that, that that was his day at work. Wow. Which to me would if that was what I did on a Wednesday right. in my prior life or or right now, I would look at it like, oh, I'm that's degenerative behavior. That's me like yeah. basically spiraling out of control. Right, right, right. <laughs> but to them, this Routine. is this guy's fucking day. Right. And, and it's and it's a great day. He had a great day, he probably made a whole shitload of money. Yeah. And it's it's kind of fascinating that that's that's the life, dude. I got respect for guys like that. I respect that man. That's yeah. something to admire. You know, I mean, I I I don't I don't go that route. But I like I said, nothing but respect for guys that do it that way. Mm. I tend to go more on the side of uh, one shoot a day. Mm. <laughs> I remember when I shot with a girl recently. She said, "Oh, you got another shoot to go to?" I was like, "Hell no, mm. <laughs> another shoot? No way." Because no. I put so much into what I do, you know, I try to create just like uh, um, the whole package, man, you know, and try to incorporate just making the girl look as good as possible and uh, whether it's what she's wearing or how she looks as far as the sex goes, like to make sure she's comfortable with everything. And I just try to make it as good of a production for content creator standards as I can, you know. Mm, definitely. And so let, let me ask you this. In terms of men increasing the size of their hardware, I how, get asked that all the time. How common is that, and and what are the forms that you see it taking at this point, bro? I don't know. I, I think we're close in this day and age. I think we're close to 
you know, doctors coming up with something that'll increase your size, you know. But I, I know back in the day when I would read, like, whether it was Playboy or Hustler or Penthouse, and they'd have these editorials about increasing your size, you know, it, it, taking a, a shoelace and ra- tying it tight around your dick and mm. stretching it, you know, crazy shit like that. Carrying, uh, you know, tying a padlock to it right. and just letting it hang all day. Hang, I used to right. hear about that. Right, same here. That, it it kind of makes sense to me. It does. <laughs> I, I tried it. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, bro, I used to do that shit. <laughs> so then some people would go, so then obviously it worked for you, right? And I'm like, I don't know. You know what I mean? I can't say, you know, I I, I don't know if there is a way to right. naturally do it. But you hear about the, the injecting of like, you know, silicone shit or right. goop or whatever the right. fuck it might be. Is that do you think that's pretty common? <sighs> I don't know. I don't I don't know, but I, dude, I think we are close to getting to a point of where it will be common, you know. Mm-hmm. I, I think we're close where like I said they're going to come up with some method for guys to just increase their shit and right. I think it's just going to add a whole new level to what's going on right now. So and I think we're close to that. But as far as like right now, I don't think that, and people ask me every day, how did you do it? You know, <laughs> so they think that you just did a really great job at right. M- you know, managing the size of Absol- you somehow for sure. Editing it. In fact, I'll even go one further. There are people that speculate that what I did in my time off was I. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, I'm going. <laughs> oh, we know what he did when he took that time off. You wow. know, he went and got his dick redone, and I'm like, yo, think about what you're saying right now. <laughs> Because yeah. that surgery where it's supposed to, like, pull it out of your body is only supposed to add, like, an inch and a half or something. Yeah. I mean, it, it, right. I mean, I've always, from when I got in the game, that's why I was in the game, because of my size. You right. know what I mean? There was no nothing. And then it's funny because, you know, every, every guy's dick is it, it different. You know, some guy's dick is straight ahead. Some guy's hooked to the mm. left or whatever. And I got a distinct curve that, mm. in my mind, I'm like, yo, if I was ever to go that route, of getting a surgery, I would have the straightest <laughs> point, you know what I'm saying? Like, my shit would be the perfect dick. And so I'm like, to think that this is something, I'm like, I'd want my money back if this is what I paid for to get some shit. But to think that there might one day be a surgery to remove a curb from your dick is kind of mind-blowing. I've had a guy, I've had a few guys actually hit me up going, man, you know, they have this procedure. Really? Uh, yeah, I, for, I forget what the, he said there was a name for it, you know? Wow. Uh, uh, yeah, and um, I said, nah, man, I'm, you know, I, I've been rolling with this my whole life. I'm not going to change anything up. This is how I'm going out, you yeah. know? So, um, but I think we are close to a, a point where uh, that's going to become more common. You right. Know? So you're, how old now? Dude, I believe it or not, I just I turned 50 not too long ago. Wow. And so I feel like a lot of the greats have kind of uh, guided themselves out of the game by 50. Right. Do you still feel like you're in your prime? Do, do you feel like there's maybe a, a time? Because people ask me all the time at 38. Right. And I'm kind of like, shit, maybe maybe I'll be done by 45. But when I think about it, it's like, well, if I could still do this at 38, I don't, I don't know why I would stop at 45. No, you'll be able to do it. And and because, <laughs> I, you know, you'll, you'll be able to do it. Because right. you know what, man? It's, it's like I equate what we do, it, like you were bringing it up earlier, to what uh, athletes, pro pro athletes, do you know? You're 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 trained to do it, and and yet yeah, pro athletes, a lot of them retire in their thirties or you know whatever. But um, depending on what sport, you can as long as your body's good, and as long as you still have that drive, you're good, man. Right? You know, I mean, I think I'm proof. Like I got a lot of older fans that hit me up, and they're like, man, you. You know, we're vicariously living through you, man, because you're an older guy who's still putting it down. You right. know what I mean? And I'm like, yo, that shit makes me feel good when they say that. And and to be honest with you, I feel like now at this stage of the game, I'm doing my best fucking because when I was younger, in my 20s and 30s, I really had a mindset of me. You know, what right. makes me feel good? What's going to get me off? You know, I'm going to fuck her in the ass. That's going to make my day. You know what I mean? So now that I'm older... I have more of a, a mindset of, you know, what makes her feel good. You know what I mean? Mm. And together, can we get to that place where it's a mutual fucking thing? And that just came with time for me. So, you know, I'm 50 now, but I feel like I could do this easily for like another 10 years, man. And I find that extremely inspiring. Yeah. 
if yeah. if there was any justice in the world, you would be having this conversation with Oprah and not me, <laughs> because this is a very inspirational tale. Yeah, yeah, no. To all you older guys out, out there, don't think yeah. that there's a you know there's a time limit or there's an expiration date. If your fuck game is good, and it's, again, health is a huge huge key. That's why health right. is wealth, man. You know, take care of yourself, eat good, get that exercise in. Um, try and stay in shape and you'll be fucking. <laughs> okay. So the, the, this reminds me of like kind of an eye opening experience I had when I was a bit younger. And, and I think that thing you're saying about like being selfish and having to just be all about you. That's a very, very common thing for guys when they're young, especially sure. if you're really sexually motivated. Chances are, and I see this with a lot of like younger dudes on podcasts and stuff that they're very motivated to fuck a lot of girls and they're not really thinking about really enjoying it or really taking their time or making right. the girl enjoy it or whatever and like there was this this, this one girl that i used to know back in austin back mm -hmm. in the day right. and i i fuck her it was about five minutes okay. in the sleeping bag in the dark gotcha you know got it in real quick fucking passed out whatever didn't, right. didn't think about it too much afterwards but mm -hmm. then a friend of mine goes to the bar and he sees her and he texts me and he goes hey that that girl that you were telling me you fuck she's she's at this bar and i text her and i say hey my boy is at the bar. Can you bang him tonight? Oh, and shit. she says, okay. Because right. she takes a look at him. She likes him, whatever. He told me that he proceeded to spend the next three days in his house doing coke with her and fucking. Wow. And that really made me feel like, damn, like, <laughs> you got right. a lot more enjoyment out of this experience than I did. I really took it for granted and right. just sort of speed ran through it. And yeah. that's not, you know, if you go to the Grand Canyon. Right. What are you gonna just fucking drive by it and be like whatever? No, yeah. you're gonna you're gonna stand it and and behold its beauty and right. its majesty and take it all in, soak it all and in. That is what life is about. And if you're speed running pussy, you're not doing it right. Yeah, no, that, that well said and and so <laughs> no, yeah, for real, man, and and so and so true. I mean, that's and I think that's that's the key. I'll one quick example uh, with anal sex, right? Mm. I shoot a lot of anal. Uh, I love fucking girls in the ass. It's a huge thing, and and I have a lot of fans that love to see that, you know. And um, it's funny because there are girls I'll shoot with who are like, you know, I've been with guys who they get so excited to do it, then they're just not thinking about me. They're just thinking about getting in that hole and shit. And I was mm -hmm. like, I get it, you know. But me personally, it's it's a process, you know. You go little, you knock on the door, you know, a little tip, okay, stay right there. You know, little by little, and you get there. But it's patience, you know, and just not um, getting ahead of yourself, kind of thing. And like you were saying just now, it's like taking your time. You right. know what I mean? And and not rushing and not getting so caught up in it that you lose all you know control and shit. So. Um, yeah, that's been like my um, kind of like my hook with with, with anal with right. girls who maybe on the fence a little bit. I don't know about that, man. Your size, but it's it's all good. Yeah, because you know there's a lot of girls out there walking around saying, "Oh, I can't do anal. Or, right. I, I don't like anal. I don't do anal." Right. And the reality is, is that when I when I think about it in my head, I'm like, you probably had some fucking tweaker meth head looking ass guy right. fucking just try to jam it in with no lube. Absolutely. This is a slow process, it and there's is. there's some girls that are just never going to be able to do it, I believe. Right. But for the most part, like if you go about it in a slow, right, composed way, oh yeah, I feel like most girls could get that, down. Brother, that is the key, man. That is it. You know, I've been with girls like, you know, anal beasts. You know, Chechik. <laughs> you know, Angela oh, yeah. White. You yeah. know, Kiss of Sins. It just like keep keep going. Fuck my ass till you can't fuck anymore. And, um, you know, and they, they obviously get it. But then I always loved the girl who, like you were just saying, who just, whether it was a bad experience or they just were like, I never got any pleasure from doing that. Mm. And I'm I, then to me, like, my that perks me up because I'm like, oh, yeah, really? Oh, let's see if we can maybe change that, you know? Um, and if they just take that time and if the patience is there, uh, 9 out of 10 at the end of the day, it's, wow, I never thought. I would feel that way from anal. Like, I came so hard from right. that. You know what I mean? And as a guy, you love to hear that shit, you know? Yeah, and there's something very intimate about it because Absolutely. it is so extreme. It's something where you kind of know for sure things could go wrong. Right. It's very intimate that you're even allowing me to do this. Right. I think that's why I... Pretty much my whole life have been jerking off to anal porn. Same. <laughs> <laughs> Same here, bro. It just feels realer. Right. You know? Yeah. Anybody can get banged in the vagina. True, true, true. <laughs> and, and and you know the way the way the way the way I look at it, 
uh, anal is like the, the the equalizer, you know, because I've been just like I'm sure you've been with I've been with girls who, you know, these are girls who can take, you know, a couple multiple guys like, OK, when's the next one coming? Right. And to me, anal, you know, that's why a true, you know, it's like all holes are wide open. You know what I mean? Like and there's a girl who I'm not so big on the anal and you throw that in there and you kind of, you know, uh, it all equals out kind of thing. Definitely. What was uh, your experience shooting with uh, my client, Sky Bree? She was great. Uh, new. Brand new talent in the game. Brand new talent in the game, obviously, uh, but from a looks wise, she's got that covered. Yeah. My question going into it, not only with her, but any girl in a situation like that, because of their newness, is can they, you know, can they do it? Right. And so I had that question with her, and I was hoping she could. And she delivered, bro. Right. Yeah, you got a you got a good one with her, man. Thank you. I'm very proud. For sure. Yeah. No, she's she's got it down, and she's got that kind of thing that you, it's like either you have it or you don't. You know, you can't. You could be taught to a degree, but like I said, it's either in the DNA or it isn't. And she's got it. The right. the looking into the camera, the when she's sucking dick. You know that shit. Where if you're a viewer, you're looking at it, and those eyes, are like, you're like, damn, you know, it's fucking you up and shit. So she's got all that covered. So I, I see, you know, it's like sky's the limit for her, man. You Ironically, know? yeah. Yeah, man. But, okay, when you say, are you really able to do it? It feels like maybe now in the in the age of a lot of girls going, you know, uh, Instagram model to OnlyFans girl to porn star, that a lot of times there's girls who end up pretty deep into the game and they're maybe not like a natural in the same way that I feel like in the older porn days, it might have been like, more consistent that if a girl was going to go into this line of work that she was just a real deal fucker right 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 now you get people who are maybe a little bit half halfway in. i always right. hear from girls that they'll go to do a shoot with a girl right. and the girl will say hey i'm gonna fake eat your pussy Ooh. and the girl and the girl is like oh right. okay because that'll you know it's still going to sell the same on only fans but right here i am thinking that we were actually going to hook up yeah you know? it's kind of a weird new world huh see you know what bro i've heard that same thing and i don't know if it's because of who i am and some of these girls who are more known for their following on whether it's instagram or wherever and um they mentally get up for it like they know because they've done their research they've seen how i get down oh your dick is like skydiving you can't there, there's no there's no room to pussyfoot around here yeah. right 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 you're either all in uh, right 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 so so I, I i i i haven't had an experience with one of those girls where it just it, it was anything but good you know what i mean but i know exactly what you're saying and i've i have heard about you know, um, situations like that, but I haven't had them, but I don't know, you know, man, it's just crazy. The, the, the time we're in right now where you have these girls who aren't really porn girls, but they're shooting porn, right? you know? And it's like, I don't know, you know? Oh. Yeah. When you see something where, you know, Lana Rhodes had this high profile, uh, brief time spent in the porn world and yep. then she kind of pivots out of it and right. now she's doing, you know, Instagram stuff, podcast right. stuff, whatever, and she she kind of regrets it, uh -huh. and it's sort of strange for me to see that because you know I'm not somebody who, who can relate to how she feels, right? But at the same time, I mean her her feelings are valid. She 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 regrets her experience in the adult industry and stuff. What is it like for you though when you see somebody say that? Because I'm surrounded by girls who look at porn like this is the thing that changed my life. Right. You know, this is the thing that like took me out of working at a real estate office. And I'm most of the girls I know would say that their happiness with them having done porn is a 10 out of 10. Yeah. You know what, man? I think that's like a common thing with a lot of girls, not all, but a lot of them who, who once they step out, they want to talk in a negative way about it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, uh, you know, don't do that. It's bad. This, that or whatever. It was funny for me with her. I shot with her a few times. Um, I don't, you know, it's hard for me to say with, with, with her. She, um, she's obviously doing her own thing now. She was great, you know, when she was shooting. I mean, you know, she, you look at her and shit, and she was the real deal. Right. There's no doubt on that. So I'm always surprised when a girl does that. I don't know what the, 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 the motivation is in that because that's what built you up. Mm. That's what did it for you. That's what put you on the map. So right. to sit there and now go, Oh, it's bad. Oh, I wish I never did that. It's kind of hypocritical and all that shit. Uh, you know, I don't think too highly of it, but I guess she's got her own, or not just her, but other girls that do that, they have their own reasons for it. 
But at the end of the day, that's what that's what made you. you yeah, know? because the fact that she's able to be so financially comfortable at this point, because I'm sure that even I'm sure her OnlyFans isn't like you know her getting fucked. I'm sure it's like boob photos yeah, and shit sure. like that for sure. But I mean. You know, the reason why you're in the place to make such an absurd amount of money off OnlyFans every month is basically because these companies did advertising for you. And yeah, maybe you didn't make too much money off of them. But in a lot of ways, if I was one of those companies that shot with you early on, I'd be thinking like a more accurate way to look at this would be to say that we probably deserve a percentage of the money that you're making now. (laughs) Right, right, Now, that wasn't in the contract, so they're not going to try to go for it. But realistically, they they helped build you. True. Without that... And I'm not saying she's not pretty, because obviously she's very oh, yeah. above she's average dope. in hotness. But, sure. you know, you might have just been another Instagram girl if it wasn't for that, right? Right. True. No. True. 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 This, who was the other girl, though? The uh, can't remember. Mia. Mia like, Khalifa. Yes. Yeah. Her. That's another one uh, who, uh, like, I've seen red things on her just totally, like, you know, disrespecting. Uh, the, now she wasn't in. Uh, she wasn't in the industry for as, her run wasn't as long as as uh, like Lana's was. Right. So I don't know. I don't know how much you want to put on that, but um, I always think it's kind of kind of fucked up when they do that, you know, um, because it's like I got what I want out of it now. Fuck them, you know. Yeah. I don't. I don't even like to know people that have that kind of mindset. So, but it, but it's a very similar archetype with them, where they're girls who got into porn at the very tail end of porn before OnlyFans kicked off. Right. So they did all this nasty ass right. shit, didn't make millions of dollars right. off it. Now they're out here making six figures a month off OnlyFans right. or whatever. Yeah. And they're kind of like, well, why the fuck did I do that? But I mean, again, Mia Khalifa, all the respect in the world. Yeah. But realistically, your OnlyFans ain't bringing in that much money if you didn't right. become the chick for totally. a period of time, right? Totally. It all it, it all connects, man. You know, you, you connect all the dots and and there you have it, you know. But uh but for those girls who like you said, who were in the game and then decided, you know what, I'm tired of showing up on set. I'm tired of doing this shit. I'm tired of being told what to do. Fuck it, I'm done. Mm. Here comes OnlyFans. Oh, wait a minute. You know, you're making that much money doing that? Right. I'm coming back. You know what I mean? Mm. And and I respect that. You know what I mean? If you could still, you know, I've shot recently with a couple of girls who like kind of left and then came back, you know. Um, I see a lot of that these days. Remy LaCroix. Bingo. Just worked with her as well. Okay. Dope. L- love her. Great girl. Respect that. You know, that she was like, you know what? Fuck that. I'm 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 getting back in this, you right. know. Uh, but then there was another girl I shot with whose name I won't mention. And it wasn't bad, but it was a clear case of, look, if you're coming back and you want to do this, you gotta, you know, you gotta be ready and like come with it right and she just wasn't ready you know what i mean so um and it's not a na- it's not a knock it's not a negative thing on her in any way but my thing is if you're a girl who was in the game and now you're gone and you want to come back and do whatever just come in and come strong kind of thing you know what i mean come back for your your bounties yeah 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 does it ever feel like a curse that your thing is the size that it is because a lot of times we will have conversations with girls and it's like do you do anal? And they'll be like, yeah. And like, would you do anal with dread? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you know, like, uh, or like a girl will be like, I did anal with dread. Right. Like, that's a straight up, it's like they fucking climbed Mount Everest. Right. Like that, that proved to them, <laughs> they ticked that box, they did what they had to do. Right. And, it, and it's like, it's very much seen as this like, sort of the most epic version of sex. Well, I have a girl, funny you should bring that up. It's a good segue. I'm shooting a girl's first anal. Well-known girl. She hasn't wow. shot anal at, at any set, and I got it locked in uh, next week, and um, she says she's she's ready for it. She's been, you know, stretching and whatnot. Wow. So I'm, I'm uh, looking forward Tell to that. Tell us stretch more. Yeah. <laughs> really. <laughs> really. Definitely, man. Stretch gang. But she knows what she's in for. We shot before, and this is going to be her first. But the, the fir- what was the first part that you had? You asked uh um just the fact that does it feel like a curse ever the size right um you know what in porn no i've I've never had that and i see there are people who will comment and go man i feel bad for him he can never get his dick in that's not true because i can there are girls that i can fuck i've seen it i see it on twitter every day absolutely all the way you know no and and it's not an issue so i never looked at it that way uh i have had a few shoots that 
it just couldn't get done, you know, and the girls, it's a head thing though. It's a mind thing. I think girls psych themselves out. Right. And once they do that, there's no going back. You know, like I think it's a, it's a pretty basic uh, blueprint for it. You know, you start off slow, you get in a little, you pause. Okay. I'm ready to go a little bit more, that kind of thing. And if in your mind you're going, there's no way I can get that dick inside me, whether it's ass or pussy, whatever. Right. Um, it, it, that's how it's going to stay, you but know? I, I've had some pussy in my life that I could barely get into. Damn. So if that girl came your way, I think she's going to get sent packing. The, okay, the, okay, yeah, I got you. Now, maybe you could get it all moist enough that it could handle it, but I don't know. It's, dude, I mean, <laughs> you know, I mean, girl, look, Sky Breeze is a good example. She, I don't think she's been with anybody my size, you know what I mean? I doubt it, And, no. and she came in, like, like from a mental <laughs> ready she wasn't she didn't come across shaky there wasn't any you know oh my god i don't know she had that 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 mindset of i'm, I'm gonna get it you know what i mean she has the perfect attitude for a porn star where mm. she is ready for the challenge she's, she's not trying to rush it necessarily right. she understands that this is better to do gradually a little bit but she's ready for it. Yeah. you know she, she takes the challenges as they come no doubt. No. Yeah, no doubt. And she just everything she did that day as far as dealing with my size was spot on. You know, it was never an issue. It was never a, you know, like a lot of girls, the, the, these words you hear when you're shooting, it's like the kiss of death. And those words are, how much do we have left? <laughs> <laughs> You know, I can't take it anymore. You know what I'm saying? But, okay, and, I saw a clip on on Twitter of Sky going down on you. Right now, from my experience getting head from Sky, her lips, you know, she, she's good at what she does. Her lips were essentially, you know, touching the base of my pubic right. region. Right. Seeing her go go down on you, it looks like she's covering a far smaller percentage <laughs> of this total thing. Right. Is that ever? Does it ever? Because you know, one of the best things about having a dick is burying your dick. Y yes. Well, here's the it's thing. It's harder for you to get that effect. Yeah, and here's the thing: when it comes to like head, getting head, a lot of girls see the size, and in their minds, they go, "It's almost like climbing Mount Everest." You know, like <laughs> yeah. I gotta, I gotta see how much of this I can do. Right. So they're. It's like a knee-jerk reaction uh, right away. Let me see how much I can get. And then the teeth become a factor. And for me, I'm like, okay, I know the point you're trying to make, but you don't have to do that. You know mm. what I mean? Because you're never going to get it all in. <laughs> you know, nobody's ever done that. Mm. So my thing is for a girl who just goes with, you know, working it, whether licking the shaft, going to the balls, uh, sucking the hell out of the tip for crying out loud. They got to figure know. out a different way to express figure, themselves there. Right. You know, right. And, and and usually the good ones, they they get it. And uh, she was one of the ones that, that got it, you know, just covering all the bases. It doesn't necessarily have to be. Now, look, is is there ever a time when I wish that my whole dick could be in some girl's down some girl's throat? Right. Yeah, of course. But. You know, it is what it is, so I'll take I'll take what I can get. Do you have a girlfriend? No. Do you you think your career prevents that or just uh, not for you right now? I was I had a girlfriend long term who uh, we're just friendly now, but that was the cause of or the main cause of why that went south. And she was a normie. Normie. Mm. Yeah. And I tried the old, hey, I'm just doing it for the money and right. it's just work. <laughs> you know why yeah. does that not work i don't know man i think because girls are just so emotional man mm. but you know that's why i got so much respect for girls that are so open where it's like i don't mind if my man's going and and you know messing with another girl i know you know that whole thing at the end of the day he's coming home to me i respect that as opposed to the how could you do that to me that's fucked up are you gonna come and crawl in the bed with me after being with her Eh, you know that's like Fuck that. You right. I mean? And it's part of it. Okay. Like, I see how guys are on set where, you know, you don't have to really, like, do anything sexual off camera between the guy and the girl. But a lot of times it feels like when the guy gets into that environment, you know, he wants to put his arm around the girl. He wants to grab her ass, kiss her, right. sort of, you know, maybe start out that emotional sexual rapport before you're on camera. Right. And that that's very, very normal. And that that's probably the kind of thing that if that girl has a boyfriend, oh, yeah. the boyfriend might not know that that's how this is going down. Right. But that is what's happening off camera. And right. that's the kind of, the, a lot of boyfriends might be able to accept the sex. They wouldn't be able to accept the like off camera totally. pre 
dick sucking yes. that might go on to get the guy hard or right. whatever. And, and bro, I've heard that uh, so many times, man. Mm. Stories about guys who are exactly like what you just described. And uh, I don't, you know, me personally, I've never had an ounce of that in me. You know, I like um, shooting with girls where we got some kind of a rapport there, um, but never anything pre or post, you know, I keep it professional. Okay. You know what I mean? And um, even when we are shooting, there's always a level with me where um, I may walk up to the line or walk up to the edge, but I, I'll never go over it mm. ever, you know, um, because I've heard so many stories about guys that go over that line. And they're like, the girls are like, I'm not feeling that. You know, I got a man, you know what I mean? Mm. And I'm not trying to have the guy I'm just there to shoot with you know, all right. sexing me and trying to, you know, throw game and this and that. And I'm like, yeah, that's weak. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I have always kept it, try to keep it professional. And even if there's a girl that may be coming at, at me in a certain kind of way, I'll make sure to, to draw that line like, yo, we're here to just do this thing and, and come up and, and make this money and shoot some good shit. Right. And that's it. No, oh, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah man. I mean, there's a few, there's a few exceptions that I'll like, you know, um, do some shit. Maybe you know something to eat afterwards. That's like a common thing. Oh, okay. Whatever, you know, that kind of thing. I'm not opposed to that. But uh, you know, a lot of these girls are in relationships, and you know, as a guy who's performing with them, you got to respect that. Right. Do you think that you could see yourself ending up in a relationship with a performer, or do you think that's less likely? <sighs> See, you know what, bro? I, I was in the relationship I was in was the long term. I mean, mm -hmm. I was with my ex for a long time, many, many years. We were practically married. And since I moved out here, I've just kind of been enjoying that freedom of, you know, single guy kind of thing, you right. know? Um, now, there's a few girls that I'll uh, talk to, one of which is sitting right out there. Right. She's real cool. And, you know, we'll get together and, and have our fun. But um, as far as like someone from the industry, I don't know, man. You know, I shoot with a lot of girls that are like half my age and shit, you right. know? And um, I'm not I'm not opposed to, to, to going out with a girl half my age, but it's just me personally, nah. Well, I, she's trying to be in the club every night. Yeah. Is that immediately like, okay, we're we're in very different places in our totally. lives here. You know? yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, I'm not saying I'm like just a guy. I don't want to do shit. I still want to have my fun and do shit, but we're just on two different levels for the most part there are some girls i shoot with that are older which i always enjoy you know but like i was telling you earlier man i try to find that enjoyment in whether it's a young girl i'm shooting with or an old a milf uh performer or even older you know what i mean so right definitely now yeah i mean i feel like when you're 50 versus 25 your 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 idea of the importance of a good night's sleep <laughs> is very different. That's like number one right yeah, there, right. too. That's like number one, man. Yeah. I mean, I can't, I'm not going to lie. I'm not even going to try and front and be that guy of, oh, man, I only slept three hours, but I'm ready for the shoot right now. Right. No fucking way. In terms of you being able to perform well, do you feel right. like that? Like you kind of need all your other ducks in a row in terms of your, your day? Absolutely. Good the, meal. Good, for me, it's like caffeine. And, right. you know, I, I need, everything else needs to be taken care of so I can be comfortable in this moment. <laughs> Yeah, no, totally. I'm, that's exactly the way I am, man. I mean, whether it's a shoot for jewels or it's even just shooting my own shit, which a lot of people may think, oh, you probably just roll out of bed and here's some hot chick coming in. And yeah, there's truth to that. But I got to be ready, you know, uh, physically, mentally. It's like a whole thing. Like mm -hmm. you just said, it's like a whole routine that you got to find out what works for you so that you're like, you got that right. Your energy level's right. And um Everything's just on point. I mean, for me, that's what works now. Right. Do you feel like there's an extent to which being in this industry kind of destigmatizes sex in a way where I feel like a lot of guys spend their whole lives sort of chasing ass. And once you get into the, the groove of shooting porn and making money off it and everything, and you've had a, a huge amount of vagina, it doesn't necessarily feel like it carries the same weight. That it might. That's true. That, I was just having a discussion like this not too long ago. That is true. It's um. It it doesn't. But uh, you know something, man. It um. God, that's a good one, man. It's hard to say. Yeah, it definitely destigmatizes it. Um, because I got friends who. They talk to me and they're like, man, you're my hero. <laughs> you know, the, the amount of pussy you're getting. And I'm like, I appreciate you saying that. Um, but 
Yeah, I mean, I guess, I, I guess so. Um, it, it, the 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 destigmatization right. is there. Yes, I mean, sometimes I hear about rappers who like, you know, a, a, a night for them is that they fucking they, they're banging like you know twelve different chicks with no condom in right. the same night right. <laughs> that aren't tested and they just met at parties or whatever. And yeah. I'm just like, wow, like yeah. knowing all that I know, right. that seems like a very reckless decision. And yeah. just the fact that that's what you've chosen to do with your fame, right? You know, at, at a certain point, I'm just like, ah, that's 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 wild. It is yeah. wild, man. And I, you know what? I don't how they do it. They do it. Right. I couldn't. I wouldn't even try to do that. Right. Uh, because again, I'm just more about stacking it all up. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Uh, setting myself up for post this, and just keeping your eyes on the prize, man, and not being reckless. You know what I mean? Um, keeping that focus. You know that's really important. You know what I mean? Do you regret not figuring out this is your calling when you were 21? Yes, that's an excellent question. Yeah. Yes, I do. Um, you know, if I could do it all over again, yeah, I would have. But you know what? The, the doors weren't open then like they are now. You right. know, I still get guys hitting me up going, man, how do I get into this? And I'm like, you're kidding, right? You know, I'm like, right. it's never been as accessible as it is now to get into porn, you know? Right. I mean, technology is a motherfucker. You, iPhone, find a hot chick somehow, some way, uh, yeah, get her to agree, and you're shooting porn. It's as simple as that, you right. know? Back in the day, it was you had to know somebody who knew somebody who knew somebody. Those days are over. Um, you know, there's just so many different streets and avenues to go on. So I always laugh whenever guys are like, help me get into it, you know? So... Um, it's just everything, and you got to love it, you know, the way it is now, you know what I mean? And it's just a good time to be a part of it, you know? It's true, because if you got into it at 21, it's not like you would have had any kind of control over your career, right. you know? And also, I wasn't, you know, I'm going to correct myself on that, Adam, in that I wasn't responsible enough mm. it, back then. If what's happening to me now happened to me in my 20s, I wasn't responsible enough. I was enough thinking to that, me. too. I'm like, if you got to this point that young or even me when i look at where i'm at right i'm like wow if i had got to this point when i was 21 how bad would i have fucked it up yeah right i would have fucking found some kind of way to fucking land myself in jail or no go doubt. bankrupt or something no doubt same thing same thing would have happened to me because i and i often think about that i'm like yo man maybe this is that whole things happen for a reason kind of thing because you know the money I'm making now, which is great. If I was doing that in my 20s, I would have been reckless, wild, mm. partying, all that crazy shit. And I just wouldn't have been able to handle it. You know what I mean? I didn't have the, the, the mindset when I was in my 20s or even 30s, you know? So the fact that it happened to me later on, you know, uh, is a good thing. Uh, there's a real conversation that's been going around in sort of manosphere uh -huh. circles about body count. A lot of guys seem very, very, uh, you know, turned off by a girl having what they view as a high body count. Right. It's kind of a funny conversation for us in the porn world. Right. Because for me, my idea of a high body count is probably very different than <laughs> what a lot of these guys are thinking. Right. Uh, does that enter into your mind at all? Is that something you would ever even ask a girl about? How do you feel about that? No, nah, no, nah, doesn't, doesn't, doesn't even. Nah, man. You know, I mean, like you said, there are some guys who would think five is a high body count. Right. You know what I mean? I know. I, I suggested like thirty as a body count, yeah. and like the the reaction from one of my co-hosts, he was like such shock, as if that was right. a huge number. And I'm like, I'm thirty. Right. If this girl has been actually has been sexually active for let's say fifteen years, that's like two guys a year. To me, that's like almost not sexually active. Right. To you, that's incredibly high. I feel like that's kind of a product of you being so young, but yeah, yeah, no, for sure, man. But no, that that has no thing on me. Uh, you know, a lot of times I shoot with girls who have shot so so many right. scenes. But now on a personal level, uh, it could it could factor into the equation uh, depending on how many. You know what I mean? But so um, I don't want to sound like I'm completely dismissive of right. if a girl slept with you know 500 guys. But my personal life, yeah, I'd have to, you know, I'd give me cause to pause. You know? A body count, would, like the 500 guy thing, that body <laughs> count would only give me pause because it's like, what was the scenario in which this was taking place? And and what was the hole in your personality that right. you were trying to fill by do like this just makes me maybe question you. Sure. It's not because I think it's icky right. or, or like whatever. Right. You know, like, right. I, like I don't look at Riley Reed. 
differently mm-hmm. because she's worked with all these fucking guys. What the right. fuck do I care? It right. means nothing to me. You, Absolutely. You've clearly accepted this as yeah. your career and stuff. Right. Sometimes, though, I, I remember I had a girlfriend back in the day who was like 21, and I realized that she'd only been sexually active for like three years and that she had fucked like 90 dudes or some shit. And I Damn. remember just thinking like, whoa. Like, right, right. <laughs> That's that's kind of like an absurd amount. Like right. you've been really active out here. Like that, it definitely gave me yeah. pause just because it made me realize like that's a lot of work you just for put sure. in. Absolutely, a couple of years here, no doubt. Yeah, for sure, man. I don't know. Um, okay, Dread, I appreciate you coming in. Uh, what yeah. what do you want the people to look out for? Uh, is there any any message that you want the people out there to understand about you and everything? You know what? The only thing I can say, man, is on Twitter, it's uh, Dread Triple X. And uh, if you're looking for some 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 good action, uh, hard, hard action, uh, good quality shit, give my OnlyFans a shot. Um, uh, it's Dread uh, Triple X OnlyFans. And um, other than oh, and also uh, check out my stuff for the great uh, from the great Jules Jordan. And um that is pretty much it, brother. I like that you're able to talk about the game without being explicit about it, which is like a skill that I've kind of slowly gained as well because people yeah. people will want to talk to you about porn at the at the poker table. Right. And it's kind of like, well, I'm not really trying to be like explicit in front of all these people that I don't know. For sure. So I like I like that you have that skill down. No, likewise, man. This was this was great, man. I really I really appreciate it, man. I'm uh, hopefully, man, we could do it again, bro. Yeah, for sure, man. Keep uh keep on rocking in the free world. No doubt. You're doing your thing. My pleasure, man. Dread. Yes, sir. Judge Dread. You ever seen that movie? <laughs> Haven't seen it, but people think my name <laughs> came from that. You know what I mean? And I don't I'm think like, I've seen it either. Right? <laughs> people are like, you must be a big fan of Judge Dread. I'm like, nah, I've never even seen it in shit. Right. Where, where did that come from, though? Good question, man. I just was one of those things. My first shoot, what are you going to call yourself? I was like, I don't know. Some people are like, is it the hair? I'm like, no. Right. Is it because girls are going to dread working with you? I'm like, no, that's not it. I just, it was like a knee jerk thing right. and it stuck. And I was like, okay. So people speculate on it all the time. But yeah, it's none of those things. Thankfully, you didn't go with like regret, right? Despair, <laughs> right? 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 Trauma. Yeah, exactly. Dread. It's going right in the middle. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Appreciate no you, man. Yep. Thanks so much. Likewise. Dread. No jumper. Coolest podcast yes, in the world. Sir. Biggest podcast in the world. Mm-hmm. Check us out on YouTube, TikTok, Patreon, Instagram, etc. Like, comment, subscribe. No jumper.com if you want to support. Appreciate y'all.